Good morning, folks. Woodby Farmer, halfway between Jacksonville and Orlando, Florida. County called Putnam. We live about three miles south of Crescent City, out in the middle of pretty much nowhere. We just had an 11 degree day, believe it or not. And I know you'll probably look at recorded history and say, 11 degrees in Crescent City? There's no way. All the, all the reporting places say it was 26. Well, it probably was where they had their temperature. They may have had their thermometer, or their temperature reading. They may have had their thermometer uh, six feet up in the air, a couple of feet from a building in the city. Crescent City itself is between a very large freshwater lake and a smaller freshwater lake slant pond. It has some pavement buildings and it's quite a bit warmer. Believe me, we were 11 degrees on the ground in our scrub on my thermometer. I have several thermometers placed around the property. And believe me, I know, I know about what I speak here. Uh, say hi to Toby. He's a complete terror. He looks real soft and friendly, but he's really nothing more than an efficient little killing machine, aren't you, Toby? Bringing in birds at night, you evil beast. So, I want to talk about the weather. This is a pink guava. Not completely suitable for the degrees in the teens and 20s. It's much happier when it's 30 degrees or above. You can see this thing has taken a little hit from the recent cold temperatures. You also see that it's slanted, so I want to mention that. I recently put this, this up, buried that fence a little bit in the ground, in the white plastic PVC pipe that I grabbed from the woods that was, that was discarded from some plumbing job. Before I had that fencing up and that PVC, contractors would come who were working on the phone lines on occasion, and they weren't particularly, particularly concerned about where they were driving. So that tree got pushed over, and it's starting to grow back up. I didn't know if it was going to make it, but it's been under a lot of stress. So my point there is, it didn't surprise me didn't surprise me that it took a big hit during the recent cold spell. Now this area in the front of our property has a lot of mature oaks. And anyone who, is, who has studied trees, who understands trees, knows that when you have a mature, established forest, these huge trees and their massive root systems. These roots are all underneath the ground where we were walking. These massive root systems, these tree systems, full of water. A tree may have approximately 50% of its weight in water. So if I look at one of these majestic 60 or 70 foot oaks, And if I just guess and say it weighs, I'm just throwing a number out there, no clue. Let's just say it weighs 3,000 pounds. Well, half of that is water. So that's 1,500 pounds of water circulating up in that tree and through all the root systems below. So if I have a tree like that guava that I just mentioned, I have it planted amongst these other trees and tree roots. There's going to be a lot of activity under the ground. That water is going to act as, within those tree roots and tree branches, is going to act as quite the moderating influence, as well as the tree branches above holding the warmer air and the moister air, offering to moderate temperatures, protect against freezes, if you will. This area up here was in no way 11 degrees like it was in my scrub area, and I'll take you back there in a minute. If I remember reading the temperatures up here, it was mid-20s. So 
Now mid-20s is a lot easier for these pink guavas to handle. As you can see here, I have another pink guava in the same area. One that was not plastered by a contracting truck. So it was under a lot less stress, and you can see little, if any, damage from the, from the freezing, freezing temperatures. But what I want to do is I want to take you back. I want to take you back to an area here that doesn't have quite the mature system support of these majestic trees. It doesn't have the network of tree roots. It doesn't have the canopy of branches above that offers to hold the moist air and moderate temperatures. These trees have a huge amount of circulation within them the water, the pump. Now this pink guava here is four years old. I hope you can see all the freeze damage. And this is a little bit closer to the forest. A little bit closer. But it's not surrounded with these massive tree roots. So that's four years old. Now compared to the young one I have up front, which is about one year old. When I say four years old, four years from the time I got it from the nursery. So this tree might be seven years old. It may have been a three-year-old tree when I got it from the nursery. And it suffered extensive damage. All right, I'm going to take you in, into our first project area. This was all grass when we started. I know the lighting is rough right now. It's probably very difficult to see. But this was all grass or whatever <laughs> it was all mowed stuff let me put it that way it's all mowed stuff everything was mowed down to the ground as you see often in these rural areas so people can throw a baseball or kick a soccer ball frisbee football whatever so we have done our best to bring in wood chips to grow the soil bring in bunches of leaves and wood chips let the natives grow back some oaks have been popping up and of course we have planted few of our own food and fruit bearing trees and bushes and vines and shrubs and herbs and you name it. So anyway, this tree has been here f almost five years and it has died twice, died back twice. This is out close to our scrub area. Our scrub area is about where my thermometer is, is about 20 feet east of me. So you can see that pink guava. Extensive frost damage. And this pink guava is just as old as the one I just showed you up front. But because it is it has been even has even it's even had more problems surviving through the freezes. So you can see it's a lot smaller because it has died back a couple of times. And again if it's because this area here doesn't have the mature trees. This is a wide open area. Now, we're planting trees here and we've had trees grow, but they don't have the massive root systems that, that the mature forest, forest up front in our property has. So that's the big difference there. I haven't done a video in a while. I wanted to share this. I know the lighting wasn't very good. But I hope you gained something from this. I gained something from... I gain something every day when I come out here and see what's going on. Lots of observation. A key principle in permaculture. To observe and to interact.